For many of us rugby league loyalists who live and breathe our amazing game, it is very hard to ignore the contribution tonight's studio guest has given to our beloved game. From his humble beginnings in 1977, when he coached the mighty Otahu Leopards to Fox Memorial Glory, and then moving across the ditch where he became a household name. He has conquered Kiwi teams to triumph against some of the game's greats, and he is renowned for moulding ordinary players into immortals. In the 80s, he conquered Britain as Wigan coach, and in the 90s, achieved the unthinkable by being the only, the only Kiwi ever to coach at state of origin level and win a series. He is a true warrior, a proud Kiwi, and a servant of the game. And it is a huge privilege to have a dream maker in our midst. What a career that was. And um, we're lucky enough to have the man himself, Sir Graham Lowe. Lowy, welcome into our fight into our garage, brother. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's, I've been looking forward to it. Straight off the bat, tell me, how did it all begin? You know, sometimes I just wonder, but um, back way, way back in the day, um, 1972, 73, 1973, I got asked by Otahu to coach the Otahu 8th grade. And I thought they'd scoured the planet looking for a good coach. <laughs> and it wasn't until I, I realised that they'd asked about 100 other people. And were, but I, I started with these boys and, and um, at Murphy Park in Otahu. And, um, and it was just fantastic. It taught me, you know, we'd, I'd never considered uh, coaching. And like, like uh, many, many thousands in New Zealand, volunteer coaches that keep all sport going, I became one of them. And uh, I was lucky I had a good group of boys and uh, a number of them went on to play for the Kiwis. And, uh, and, it, and the best thing for me personally is those boys taught me about myself and they showed me what I wanted to do. You coached at the, the highest of highest levels when it comes to coaching, uh, NRL, you know, Origin, New Zealand. Why do you want to be a coach? Oh, I, it was never in my never in my plan. You know, just uh, I always thought I loved rugby league for a start. I played rugby league from when I was five years old, and I just loved it. Um, my mother and I thought I was a great player, and I should have been a Kiwi, but the selectors didn't think the same back in those days. So I was just a plugger for for Otahu. Um, you know, the few games in Premier Grade and Reserve Grade in and out, always a little bit too small and maybe a bit too young. Um, but but after a number of injuries and I wanted to start my own business, I'm an auto electrician by trade, so I started my own business in Otahu and, and I had to stop footy then because just too many injuries and um, you know you had to be at, at work, working for yourself. Um, but out of the blue, just out of the blue, I got asked by Otahu, uh, by a guy, uh, Glenn McManus, um, who was a famous name in the Otahu club, and he asked me if I'd coach Otahu 8th grade. And um, so I thought about it overnight bought myself a new tracksuit, clipboard, and, and away I went. And that's, that's how I started. You, you would have had so many great memories throughout your, your career. So what are some of the fondest memories you remember? I think, Adam, thinking back on it, uh, particularly asking me how I got into it, I, you know, I, I found myself standing out in the middle of Murphy Park one day thinking, what do you do? When you're a coach, what do you do? Because no one really gets... You, you, there's no apprenticeship to it. No one gets told how to coach or, or, or advised. So I wrote a letter. So I wrote to all the big sporting franchises I could think of. I wrote to Liverpool Soccer. I wrote to um, Real Madrid. I wrote to Liverpool. I wrote to Australian Cricket. I wrote to the Dallas Cowboys. I wrote to all these people all around the world. And I basically said, my name's Graham Lowe. I coach 8 to 8th grade. What should I do? <laughs> basically, that's what the letter was. And because um, this is way back before email and all that stuff. This is back in the 1973. And then about two months later, maybe three months later, I can still see it now in my letterbox. A white, there was a white envelope and it had par Avon on one side, which, you know, which is, I knew it was email and I, I knew it was uh, email. And, um, and it had Dallas Cowboys. So I opened it up and there was a letter there from Tom Landry, who was wow. the Dallas Cowboys coach. And I kept in touch with, with Tom right up till the mid 80s, right up till when I was coaching the Kiwis. And, and, and he, so a lot of stuff, he, 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 was, he was fantastic. We only ever spoke on the phone. I never met the man personally. I never spoke to him on the phone. He invited me to the Dallas Cowboys pre-season camp, in 19, uh, the summer camp in 1984. But in 1984, I was coaching the Kiwis, and the Kiwis had never been beaten Great Britain in New Zealand, and they were touring. So I had to make my mind up whether to go over to, to England and have a look at the players over there or go to the Dallas Cowboys camp. And I just wanted to make sure the Kiwis won. So 
I chose that path and, and um, luckily we beat Great Britain that year and won the series. Uh, I know you, by, by listening to your passion about rugby league, I know you would watch what's going on at the moment. What do you think of the game itself in general? Well, I think the game is fantastic. I think, you know, the, the crowds, the crowds are just brilliant. It's, it's been through a tough patch, you know, like everywhere with COVID. But the leadership, you know, uh, the leadership from the from the NRL was just outstanding. They never dropped a beat. Really, it was really difficult for the Warriors, and 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 you know, you, you, um, everybody knows how hard it was, and you, and you felt for them. But they every they they all got through it. And actually, looking at the Warriors playing now and and how they are, I think it's probably added to the fabric of who they are, and they can draw on that in the future. So, but I think the game's in good hands. It's in good, great leadership. The game, the, the the crowds they're drawing is just remarkable. Really, they, they, it's just fantastic. It's just really fantastic. If you're a league person, you just you do, you you've got to keep reminding your rugby mate mates about it, don't you? You know, so um, I just think it's great. We talk a lot about our Māori and Pacific players, especially on this show. Do you think the NRL is doing enough for our Māori and Pacific players, or could they be doing anything more? Uh, I, I, I think they probably are doing enough. I'm not sure. There's probably always stuff they can do more. But the thing that really, really, Maddie pleases me is anyone from New Zealand, anyone from New Zealand who's got a rugby league or rugby union background, anyone has who's who who watches the game closely has knows that the NRL is just it's just absolutely the. Maori and Pacifica players are born to play NRL. They're born to it. They've got natural flair. You know, they usually have a bit of size and strength about them, but they've got, the thing is they've got natural flair. I think the game went through a little for a little while over there in the NRL, went through a little, a little bit of the coaches coaching, trying to coach that flair out of the players, and I think the game suffered from it, and also a lot of the players suffered from it. But overall... Um, they seem to have got their act together, and, and and look at the Warriors now. You know, with the coach they've got now, I've never met the man, but just listening to him, the interviews I've heard him um, uh, on with on TV, and I, th I think he's got the connection with the public, and he's most of all he's got every one of those Warriors players playing to their potential. And as a coach, that's all you can ask for. What about when you went over in your early days? Uh, you know. The diversity, having different cultures, uh, obviously being home and then going over there, you got your indigenous boys, you got your Australians, you got your New South Wales, Queensland yeah. guys, then you got your your Samoan, uh, your Pacifica boys and Maori. Yeah. How, how did how did you adjust to that, or back then, or, or did the game do anything to help help you understand that? I think there was there was um, well, I, I had a bit of a intro initially with Norths in Brisbane. Back in the in the early 80s, so I went up there and coached in 1979, coached them till uh, 82. Um, so I had a bit of an introduction up there. They used to have two Winfield Cups back in those days, one in Sydney and one in Brisbane. But going to Manly and and seeing the the different cultures and the different, um, you know, all the different connections, I always simplified the whole thing because um, to me there was only one culture that mattered, and that was a football culture, and everybody had to fit into that. You you did. You, you made sure you respected everybody that was there, no matter where they came from, what they did. Everybody deserved and got that respect. Um, and then the only other thing we focused on was the football culture. You had to have the football culture, which has its own language in itself. So it has its own language, its own virtues and values. And I think that overrides all, all cultures in the world, to tell the truth. You can get countries anywhere in the world that are at war with one another, and yet they'll play soccer or... or tennis or, or a sport against one another. So the language of sport, I think, is a special language that, that encompasses all cultures.